Yeah, dude. What can I say? I've lived a life of crime. This is going to be my top 10 craziest arrests in the order that they happened. The first time I was ever in a jail cell was the night before I graduated high school in 1992. I went to high school in London, England, and the night before graduation, I was getting hammered at a pub. I'm outside on the sidewalk where I chugged a pint of lager and threw the glass against the wall, smashing it everywhere, and I did that right in front of a cop who took me to jail. So I get home at like, I don't know, six something in the morning. I'm hungover as shit at my graduation. If you can believe it, my second arrest was for the same crime as my first, drunk and disorderly. But this time it was in Miami. My buddy and I were walking across the street, jaywalking. The arrest report said, defendant and co-defendant appeared to be laughing and playing in the road, taunting eastbound drivers. So we were like playing chicken. I can be, you know, I'm in the road. The cops came, you know, <laughs> and they took us to jail, dude. Weird that I was drunk again, but this time I was driving, which I'm not proud of. And I was all fucked up on alcohol and pills. So I didn't even realize the cops were trying to pull me over. Like I kind of came to and I was all over the road. I realized the lights were on. I pulled over and as the cop walked up to my car, I put down the window and I said, you got me. I will cooperate. Again, I'm not proud of the crime, but it was a sweet mug shot. I put it on a mug. Within one month of getting my license back from my first DUI, I got my second DUI. And I actually have the physical arrest report. The roadside sobriety tests. I asked the defendant to perform a one leg stand, which he refused, stating he was really tired and would prefer to take a nap. <laughs> they got me. At my arraignment, I asked to be taken to jail immediately to serve my 10 days, which I did. And I wrote my jailhouse memoirs in there. <laughs> yeah, dude. I was passing these fucking pages through the fucking bunk beds in this big, gigantic gymnasium cell I was in. That's an attention whore. <laughs> After that second DUI, I did the right thing, and I quit driving. I somehow managed to go over six years until my next arrest, which was in 2002, for multiple felonies. One was felony obscenity for stapling my ball sack to my leg in a Louisiana nightclub. <laughs> and principal to second degree battery because I invited this kid on stage to try to run past the bouncers who slammed him on his head and it was really, really gnarly. Between those two charges, I was facing eight years in prison and I got arrested on a fugitive warrant with $1.12 million bond, meaning that I had to put up $120,000, which I did not have, to get bailed out. When they did let me out, I forfeited my ID and my clothes so that I could hold on to my L.A. County shoes. And then while I was out on bail, I flew to fucking Europe and got arrested again. I was on my old Don't Try This At Home tour in Norway, and I decided to film this international drug smuggler bit I came up with, where I would put a bunch of weed into a condom, tie it in a knot, swallow it, and then fly to another country and crap it out and smoke it. But I put too much weed in the condom, so it got stuck in my throat, and I was puking up blood trying to fucking get it out. Still stuck in my throat. It was so gnarly, but I went ahead and got on the plane and flew to Sweden. And that package of weed did not come out for six and a half days. So I started to think I was gonna die of intestinal strangulation or some shit. And the whole time I was in Sweden, I was just 
saying it in every interview. So the Swedish cops read the newspaper and they decide to come arrest me the morning after I crapped it out finally and smoked it all. But yeah, dude, I got arrested for international drug smuggling in Sweden while I was out on bail for ball stapling in America. Now this one's not so cute like the last one. I was on drugs in a scary way. See what I'm saying? I'd been having this neighbor war with the guy in the next apartment. I hate my neighbor! And this one night I was on ketamine and cocaine and drunk and like, I'm pounding on the wall. I pounded a hole through the wall. Like I'm looking into the neighbor's apartment and like threatening him. And uh, I said, like, call the cops now. And he did. So the cops show up and they're like, we have to arrest you for vandalism. And like, it's gonna be cold. And so I'm like, dude, I don't care. And I just go barefoot, no shirt. And with a bag of cocaine in my pocket to the jail where they searched me, found the cocaine and arrested me again for cocaine possession. My first arrest after getting clean and sober was fucking stupid. I was in Canada in 2011 and I was promoting my comedy tour at the news station. The anchor lady asked me if I had ever been to Calgary before and I said, yeah, this one time I ran away from cops after we beat up this dude who had attacked me on stage and little did I know there had been a warrant out for me that whole time. So when I tried to fly home, I showed my passport to the immigration officer and the guy was like, oh yeah, hey man, just like chill in this room real quick. I had no idea, next thing you know. And these police officers came in and, and uh, they uh, treated me to some handcuffs. <laughs> right, in, in other words, you were arrested That's in Calgary right. the last uh -huh. time uh, just after we saw you. Mm -hmm. I was locked up in this cell for all day. And then I had to hire lawyers. Plus, my buddy Preston Lacey had to hire lawyers because I incriminated him. Now this one's absolutely my most well-publicized arrest. It was when I was protesting SeaWorld at the top of a 150 foot tall crane with an inflatable killer whale while a police helicopter is fucking circling around me and there's like, 18 fire trucks, 80 firefighters, like 20 some police officers. And I'm not pulling those numbers out of thin air. That's from the arrest report. When I got my lawyer for this one, I said, I want to get sentenced to jail. And he was like, why? And I told him, well, because I was protesting captivity and I got sentenced to 30 days in jail. I milked it with like cartoons of me in a jail cell next to an orca in a jail cell. When I went to jail, they let me out after eight hours. But shortly thereafter, they changed laws which stopped SeaWorld from breeding orcas in captivity. Maybe I helped. Which brings us to my most recent arrest when I was on my bucket list tour in Washington, D.C. and my girl Lux and I went to go visit the Lincoln Memorial. Now, how am I not gonna climb on the Lincoln Memorial? <laughs> I couldn't help myself. So I fucking climb up and then this cop just comes right out. I didn't know there was a cop there the whole time. And uh, he puts me in handcuffs, he says that, uh, if he sees the footage of me climbing that statue on the internet, he'll issue a federal warrant. And so I took the footage and animated it. Believe it or not, because this is YouTube, there was a lot I couldn't show you in this video, but there is a 
fully naughty, totally uncensored version of these stories at stevo.com in my multimedia gnarly comedy special, which is now downloadable. So download it, share it, enjoy it. I love it. And we're dangerously close to the release of my new book in September, and signed copies are available for pre-order at stevo.com too. Thank you for your support. I love you all. Yeah. <clears throat>